Welcome back for the last season of Return to Glory with the Montreal Canadiens. So for the start of the 2035-2036 season, we do have some news. We did win, or Zach Benson ended up getting the Conn Smythe Trophy winner, and Pearden ended up getting the Selkie as well. So it looks like we're probably going to end up keeping Pearden just because he is the best uh, defensive forward, so we're obviously going to have to keep him. Um, but big news, though is well zari i don't know why zari is saying it he never played for us okay so apparently he's retiring and wants to spend time fishing um who cares marner retires that's pretty big as well marner retires at 38 suzuki deciding to hang it up as well um we thank you for all that you've done and uh, he just wants to have a family that I love and I want to spend time with. So we thank you. At 35, Suzuki, congratulations on an amazing career. Uh, there is another one, Cole Sillinger, but he didn't play for us, so I don't know why they're even showcasing that one. But um, yeah, development, Cole Caulfield is slowly um, reducing in terms of his overall but i swear i saw another one devin levi retires as well so we thank you um for getting us to the finals and at least you end up getting a cup with us i think you got two cups if i'm not mistaken uh where is it oh no he won three actually wow okay so he won sabers very early on then he won with chicago and then he won with us. Jesus, this guy deserves to be in the Hall of Fame for sure. Let me let's look at his stats. What did he do with them? Was it the 2031 season? He didn't play that much. He played kind of like a backup role. So maybe maybe not. But he did do very well for us uh, when we end up reaching the finals. But uh, playoff wise, 2031 he did. He did end up playing most of the games for that season, so congratulations. Yeah, you definitely deserve uh, some form of recognition, though. But yeah, off to the start, um, we do have a decent amount of coaches retiring as well. But very happy to say goodbye to um, Suzuki. He's been great for the franchise. Um, and taking a look in terms of the contract, $72 million, that seems off. So we're going to have to take a closer look at that, but uh, there's definitely going to have to be some people that might have to go. Pearden might be one of them. Celebrini is probably the last season that he's going to have with us as well. Well, everyone's last season. So we don't really care about these contracts going forward. Um, and then Longboat, yeah, we're going to need a backup uh, goalie for sure. Uh, spending $27 million in terms of defensemen and uh, two point six on goalie so we might want to repair that just for the start of the season but uh let's get on with it let's go towards the uh, beginning of the season and see what our roster is going to look like for this season it is the last season that we're doing return to glory the 2035 2036 season and once again the ai did something that pissed me off uh they ended up trading away where is he ivan kovic so our starting goalie for no reason at all when I did uh, AI uh, select uh, lines and stuff. Ivan Kovic traded away for a third. And then we tried to trade several firsts for him, but there's nothing going for it. But uh, I thought he was a pretty decent goalie for us. We did owe him everything, but um, I guess uh, we are going to have to see how well he plays out uh, this season uh, with the Tampa Bay Lightning, which I think are still rebuilding. But uh, we then end up getting rid of Gunnarsson and Strenad, um, mainly because I found Bo Danfus. Now, I don't know if anyone knows Montreal Canadiens, but um, his dad is Vincent Danfus, who was one of my favorite players as a kid. So I felt the need to grab him the last season that I could. Um, and I'm very happy that I did, because it looks like he's going to play a role for us this year. I'm very excited. Um, we end up sending a bunch of players down as well. We ended up having to then sign our goalie here. So we'll take a look at our roster. We end up having to sign Mullen, uh, who was an acquisition that we ended up getting last year. So just a quick look at his stats. His mental 
Uh, seems pretty decent in terms of at least his professionalism, stamina, and de determination, but uh, he is still kind of raw. Um, so I'm really hoping that uh, he does develop into a decent uh, player throughout the season, maybe even a three star. But uh, mental, uh, I think, is factored in pretty heavily in this. So hopefully he's closer to the two and a half range and our team is good enough uh, for for him to strive in it. Um, it's just unfortunate that we're only going to get to see one season of this. But uh, it is what it is, and there's not much that we can do with it. So currently our lines for this season is Mullen is starting, and then Thorne is going to be his backup. We have Proza uh, Provaznik, McNally, uh, I Iconikov as our bottom line. And then we have Cole Caulfield, Tuo Mella, and Smith as our third line there. We have Pearden, Benson, and Carlson as our third line. Slavkovsky, Celebrini, and Demidov as our top I'm sure that uh, Cole Caulfield and Slavkovsky might end up making a switch there at some point, but uh, Antos and Danfus are getting the nod at the bottom line there, so Danfus is going to play a role there as a quarterback. Then we have Gustafsson, Vernhoff as our second line, and then we have uh, Lundqvist and Huang as our starting D, which is pretty exciting. We did pretty decent in the preseason. We ended up... Uh, as you can see, we won the last three straight there. We did start off a little bit uh, rocky there, but uh, we ended up winning. Um, we lost two, so we did pretty good overall um, just by rotating goalies. So we're probably going to do that uh, approach throughout this season. But let's take a look whether or not uh, we're projected to do well this season or not, despite not having our goalie. So despite not having our goalie, we are still projected to win the Stanley Cup again, which is pretty impressive. It would be very. Di I doubt that we're going to make it this year, but uh, pretty exciting nonetheless. Demidov is the stud that they think that uh, is uh, going to lead us to victory, and then obviously myself as well. Um, we are the team to beat this year. Doug Waite. I'm surprised. I don't. I didn't see him throughout this whole thing. So let's take a look at. Okay, so he's only been. He was Islanders head coach for a while ago. So before this whole thing started, and then somehow randomly still in the system, and then I guess the Sharks decided to hop on that. Um, I don't. I think they made the playoffs last year, so that is kind of surprising. And then Seattle looks like they're projected as well. Edmonton. Let's see if uh, Connor McDavid is still there. Connor McDavid is on the last year, so it is kind of fitting that, and we are on his list of uh, exceptions that he would come to. So maybe maybe if Edmonton's trash, we end up going all in for Connor McDavid to get him to win a cup with us. Is uh, it doesn't it looks like uh, looks like Jacidal's gone though. Oh, Jacidal's here. Are we on his list as well? No, it doesn't say anything. I guess he doesn't have a no movement clause. Or no trade clause as well. But pretty exciting nonetheless. And then you end up having um, Hirsch, who looks like he had 105 points last year. Santala has been very good as well. He is 25 and projected to be in the scoring race as well. I kind of doubt that we have anyone that uh, is fitting for that. Uh, maybe Cole Caulfield does have uh, a little bit of more gas in him uh, for this season. Mainly because... As if you guys have been paying attention, he is very close to being the all-time goal leader. I highly doubt that he ends up being the point leader as well. So throughout this series, we managed to have Oninger get into the top three and Cole Caulfield getting in the top three as well. I'm pretty sure he's going to end up getting the goals for it. It, it is very marginal. Uh, he should be able to get it uh, no problem. It's only rather, roughly around 20, point, or 20 goals there. And um, even his worst season, I'm pretty sure he got 20 goals. Yeah, his first rookie season, he got 23. So as long... Oh, last season, he only got 20. Oof. So, yeah, he should still be able to get it. I think um, I think it's going to be an interesting season. I don't think we're going to do as well as what they're projecting us. But I have been fooled before. So let's hope that uh, I am on the right side of that. Um, we'll just fast forward to uh, the end of the season and see how well we do for our last season in charge. And this concludes the 2035-2036 season. We managed to do the unthinkable. We managed to win 60 games. I didn't think that it was possible that we'd be able to do that. We only suffered 14 losses in regulation and then 8 in overtime, which is 
pretty decent. I think that's the best that we've done throughout this whole uh, this whole experience. Uh, we'll just take a quick look at the career stats that we've had. So the highest that we've ever had. Oh no, we got 60 before. This is the second time that we've had it, but uh, we've had a lot less losses uh, in regulation. We managed to get more points. So this is the best that we've done um, by around eight points, uh, which is still very good, uh, which leads us to in around 1,074 games, we have 626 wins, 382 losses, and 66 overtime losses. That is, for percentage-wise, is around 58% um, of our games have been wins in regulation, which sounds worse than what it is. But, I mean, batting almost around uh, 600 is pretty decent. So we are happy about that. Uh, we have won uh, five Stanley Cups there. Uh, President's trophies don't really get considered in this. Uh, we would have bagged another one as well. But uh, winning another division is definitely uh, worth it as well. But we'll take a look at um, at our players' accolades and seeing how well we end up doing um, in terms of the individual stats uh, because I find that a little bit exciting as well. Uh, Demidov, 95 points in 82 games. Benson with 78 in 82 uh, Carlson was 73 and 82. Slavkovsky was 70 and 79. That's pretty decent. He is uh, dropping off a bit, but uh, that's much better than I would have thought initially. Pearden doing very well as well. 61 points in 82 games. Cole Caulfield getting 61 in 79 games. That is that's better than last year. So he did uh, he did have a little bit of an uptick from from last year's numbers, which is always a joy to see. Uh, but we'll look later to see if he managed to um, if he managed to end up winning the the franchise record for goals uh lundquist doing 61 points in 82 games vernhoff doing 59 in 82 iconikov 59 and 82 so everyone's just dominating i think the worst player that we end up having was um provaznich who still had 14 points in 31 games and even uh antos had 17 and 31 and their grades were overall pretty decent mcnally doing pretty well as well um, but we'll take a look at how our goalies did because we did kind of do a bit more of a tandem uh, than we would have liked uh, just because we end up losing the goalie throughout the regular season. But um, um, Thorne ended up starting 22 games uh, or game played 22 games. He won 15 of them, lost one and three OT losses, which gives him 915 save percentage. That's that's remarkably good for a guy who hasn't really got an opportunity to play for us. Um, that is insane. And then um, Alex Mullen ends up getting 45 wins in 64 games. That is unheard of. 13 losses and 5 overtime losses. He has 2.57 goals against and 916 save percentage. And then let's just take a look to see how well oh, Cole Caulfield managed to get 553 goals in his career. How many games is that? But he ends up beating Maurice Richard for the franchise leader, and he is in third place for points leader. So this is very nice that since we end up having the Ottinger mess, that uh, that kind of got ruined there, um, that we finally get something to cheer for there. And then even uh, wins leader Ottinger is in second place in terms of total. You have just Seidel and McDavid. Insane. I think McDavid signed another year as well. He is currently <laughs> second and third. For points, uh, Dracidal's in uh, in third place for goals. He could have beat Gretzky, but I think he's going to retire this season. And then Connor McDavid getting second in assist. So he's still around 600 off. So I highly doubt he does that in one season. And who the hell is this guy? In his second year with the NHL, he manages to get a 923 save percentage. That is insane. But all in all, we are extremely happy with uh, Cole Caulfield. We'll take a look at his career because this could be the last year that he plays or he could play another year. He just turned 35. But uh, in 1,174 games, uh, he has 553 goals, 560 assists for a total of 1,113 points. That is crazy. For playoffs-wise, we'll take a look at it after. 
but he does have 200 points in 214 games. I would love to see a little bit more from from him this season. He is his first season that he's the captain for us, so I'll be very I'll be very happy to see how well he can do. Um, but he ended up tying uh, the record or the franchise record for goals in. Um, 1157 games he did it against New York Rangers in New York and then two days later he got two goals to uh, to pass it with um, yeah 1158 games he ended up getting 546 goals against the Hurricanes at home so he just wanted to wait till he was at home so he could win in front of the fans and um, and show that uh, yeah that's that's how <laughs> that's how we roll pretty much um, we did get a couple emails that I did check here. Uh, there are a couple awards that we are nominated for. Um, not for the heart, though. Not for the Vesna, which is kind of shocking since I feel as though we were top three. But the Norris, um, Vernhoff, and Lundqvist are both um, people that uh, are players that might end up getting it. Um, I like the odds of two out of three there. And then you have uh, Alex Mullins, who might even get the Calder. He ended up getting 45 wins, and that is remarkable. Um, another goalie as well, but 37 wins in 26 games. I think we have the edge on that. And then um, Valachech, uh, I don't think he's anywhere close. There's no way that he wins. I would be extremely shocked if he does. I don't know how he's getting the Calder when he's already played 49 games for Winnipeg. Oh, no. He's, oh, okay, so the combined, my bad. 46 points in 83 games. So, no, I think we're, we're going to get that. Uh, we are nominated as well for the Executive of the Year Award, and uh, Selkie Cole Puritan could get it back-to-back -back years. I think he's got three years in a row. Boric, um, Lady Bing, um, he ended up having a 43-point season. So a little bit better than last year, so couldn't be happier with that. Uh, nothing for the Marc Messier Award. And then uh, we are also nominated for Jack Adams, which I don't think we've ever won the Jack Adams Award. Um, so that would be very exciting to see. Um, but so far, it looks like we're probably going to end up playing um, Ottawa Senators for the first round. So that'll be exciting. We'll see how well we do um, with the playoffs, and then we'll end up doing a closer look at all the points towards the end in terms of uh, drafts and everything like that. So stay tuned for that. So let's push through to the end of the uh, reg or end, end of the playoffs and see if we can manage to get our sixth trophy there. So the good times didn't stop there, and we managed to win another Stanley Cup. This is our sixth um, since we've been in charge, 30th for Montreal. We ended up facing off against Arizona. We played them again last year. We swept them last year, but they managed to at least get one win here as a consolation. But on our road here, we managed to um, beat Ottawa first. We didn't have the luxury of getting to beat Toronto, which is the only disappointing part because Detroit Red Wings did it for us. We then beat them in six games. We beat Florida in uh, five games, and then we end up beating uh, Arizona in five games as well. So uh, Cole Caulfield and Demidov and Mullen all did fantastic for us, but a uh, quick look at how well everyone else did. Um, you end up having uh, Arizona, who end up beating Vancouver uh, right off the bat uh, in Game 7. Um, then Arizona ended up beating Nashville, and um, it came close with uh, Minnesota, but uh, still they end up beating them. But they were the first, uh, they were the number one team in the in the West there, so it was kind of surprising that we kind of made easy work of them. And it just made it so easy as soon as, uh, <laughs> for us on the on the right side here, uh, we ended up beating uh, Ottawa pretty handily. We had some pretty high-scoring games against them. And then somehow every other team, like New Jersey ended up losing, who would have been a difficult competition. We had Columbus that would have been very difficult. They finished very close to us in the regular season. But they got flatlined by Florida, who we had a very good record against um, throughout the regular season. And then you had uh, Detroit, who made easy work of, of Toronto and just knock them out in five games, which then uh, we ended up doing in six games. So it made it pretty easy. It was, the, it was probably the easiest playoffs that we've ever had um, in terms of our players, but we'll take a quick look at um, at how well our players did this season uh, for the playoffs. We ended up having Demidov, who got 33 points in 22 games. It is the Demidov show now. Uh, now that uh, Cole Caulfield 
is getting a bit older. He still managed to get 15 points in 22 games, which is very impressive, despite how his regular season kind of turned out. Um, but uh, yeah, Demidov had it. He had Carlson with 29 points in 22 games. He had Pearson or Pearden even with uh, 25 and 22 games. He had Vernhoff with 19 and 22, and Benson even with uh, 19 and 22. All in all, doing very well. Everyone everyone putting in the effort there, and that is exactly what we'd like to see in terms of grades um, as well. He said Carlson, uh, Demidov at the top there, Pearden and Slavkovsky with 70. Um, that That is just massive for us. We'll take a quick look at um, our goalies as well, because... Um, yeah, we didn't really uh, rely so much on uh, Thorn, <laughs> except for uh, six six goals against there. Um, but 16 wins, five losses, and one OT loss. Uh, 906 save percentage was very good, and 2.83 uh, goals against was even better. Um, but we couldn't have we couldn't have done this without um, Mullen. Mullen's now a three and a half star. So after season at at the beginning of the season, he started off as two and a half or two, I think, even, um, when we end up signing him, and then automatically end up going up to a, a three throughout halfway through the season, and towards the end, he is now um, a three-and-a-half star. But we'll take a look at um, how well we've done in terms of the history of the franchise as well. Um, we'll take a look at um, the players here. Uh, regular season, we end up leaving it with Cole Caulfield in third place there in terms of points. He still had Suzuki in the top 10, and Benson just making it in the top 10 as well. Slavkovsky's still pretty close, but Benson was the signing of the of um, our franchise for sure. We got him year one. Um, we didn't give up too much for him, I don't think. Uh, we end up giving up... What did it cost us? I can't even remember. We end up uh, giving up New Hook, and... Uh, rights to, I don't know, we got Johnson as well. Montan Blow we end up getting rid of. We gave up Kapanen, uh, Tuch, and uh, fifth round pick as well um, for for him as well. So that was probably the best uh, signing that we've done throughout the whole thing uh, in terms of trades. Uh, best signing is obviously going to be Ottinger, um, but we'll take a look at how well everyone did in terms of playoff history. Cole Caulfield, number one, 215 in 236 games. Massive. Demidov coming in second. Wow. 184 and 204 games. And then you end up having Benson in fourth place with 163 points in two, 210. Then Slavkovsky with 157. And you have Suzuki with 153. So this last season ended up making it a, a huge difference there. Uh, in terms of goalies, uh, yeah, I think Ottinger is, is number one. He was, he was the best pick for our franchise for sure. Um, even doing well now after he ended up leaving us, or we had to part ways with him, sorry. And uh, Devin Levi, still honorable mention, but Ivan Kovic uh, for last year, um, and Mullen as well, doing pretty well. But we'll take a look um, at how well the draft we end up doing there. So we'll start off with the first year here uh, that we end up taking over. And 2023, 2024, that doesn't seem right. Uh, is that even everyone that's there? Oh, Bedard. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so Benson finishing second is kind of shocking. He was 13th pick, but uh, definitely kind of like a second um, overall there vibes. He ended up finishing a little bit higher than Fantilli. He played more games than Fantilli. Fantilli's 31. Uh, Michov also doing pretty well as well, but uh, we'll take more of a closer look at how well we did... Um, through our draft, think players that we end up drafting, but uh, Rhinebacker there doing pretty well as well, so couldn't be happier for him. Um, he ended up having a decent career after he left us, or after we parted ways with him. I keep saying we left him. Um, but Demidov being the number one player in the draft, so anyone that's drafting year one, um, Demidov seems like he's going to be the monster of the whole thing. He's 30, four and a half star potential and four and a half star ability gets 95 points when he's 30, which we do owe a lot of our success to him blossoming into the player that he was. Um, but 755 points in 867 games is is pretty big. Rembo didn't end up being uh, the top player there. Um, and then I think 
where's our next player? Um, Celebrini then coming in probably around top top 10, top 15 there. He ended up having 468 points, which is still pretty good. A point every every half a game, I guess. Um, but that looks like pretty much all the players that we got. Uh, Pearden was the player that we ended up grabbing after. He, I think we kind of uh, distinguished his career there a little bit because the last three seasons he ended up combining for over 150 points there. So uh, around pretty much half his career points was, was from us. Uh, but we'll take a look at the next year as well. And, um, I mean, it doesn't look like we, we drafted too well. But Huang coming in there, uh, he's for defenseman. Well, I guess a lot of them were defensemen. So Schaefer was actually the best pick of the draft. Um, but Huang, who we got in the third uh, third overall, uh, ended up, I mean, again, we owe a lot from him as well. Um, so we owe him great thanks. Will Sharp as well. We end up getting him in the second round. So he's a steal in 2025-2026. Um, and I don't think we have anyone else there, but that seems like the the people to worth mentioning. Even Prudhomme, we got in the second round. He's still got around 250 points throughout his career as well. We're not going to really take a look at goalies because, uh, I mean, I feel as though goalies are very hit or miss. Um, in 2026 draft, we had Vernhoff there. Uh, we didn't end up drafting him, but he stayed on, he got on our team. 467 points. It's pretty good. Uh, Rubric also with 412. But, um, yeah, that, those seem like the only players that we really end up having there. And then, um, we didn't, I don't think we had anyone from these drafts afterwards. I think... Duraj would have been the only guy, but I don't think we drafted him as well. Uh, Strenad was the player that we ended up getting, so we ended up getting him late. I mean, he still kind of did uh, pretty decent, though, I would say. But uh, And Rosa, I don't think Rosa we ended up grabbing. Did we grab Rosa? No. Wrong guy. Um, yeah, I don't see him now, but that's all right. Um but yeah, all in all, that's that's how well we end up doing. Uh, couldn't be happier. This this was a, a joy to to do, and I can't believe that we managed to finish um, with that many uh, trophies uh, in the end of it. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'm I'm beyond words here at this point. Uh, 128 point season to to finish it off for us, uh, and we managed to win another Stanley Cup there as well. So um, back to back again. So um, we're going to probably do another series uh, very soon, though. We're probably going to do one. I think we decided that we're going to do um, Pittsburgh Penguins is going to be the next one. Um, and then we're going to try to do another thing as well that uh, that we've been working on as well. Uh, so we'll take a look at um, Pittsburgh Penguins for, for next time and uh, still keep it in the East. I know we're going to want to do some... Uh, some west ones but um but yeah this is it for the series uh thank you everyone for watching and until next time